Here is a very brief summary of the application flow of the Concordant Insurance application that we're about to build. To run the application, the clerk logs in and creates a policy for a customer. The clerk will also create one or more vehicle objects and associate them with a policy. When the customer has an accident, they report it to file a claim. The claim is associated with the policy for that customer. When the claim is created, it is added to a work queue. In our case, there may be several insurance clerks processing policies and claims. A work queue allows multiple people to acquire and complete tasks in the queue. A claim task is acquired and relevant documents may be added to the claim. Eventually, another clerk will acquire the task and mark it as either approved or denied. When the claim status reaches certain states, the object is passed along to the CIS server to prepare for some historical queries. Of the concordant insurance application that we're going to discuss relates to custom object types. Custom object types allow architects to extend the core EMC Documentum data model. The EMC Documentum content server comes with several built-in object types like document and folder. A document object would represent some kind of file or document imported or created in the repository such as a Microsoft Word document, a PDF document, a scanned mail document, or any other kind of file. These object types contain various properties, some common to several types and some specific for that particular type. Some examples of common object properties would be the object name, object ID, object type, created on, created by, parent folders, keywords, etc. The built-in object types are very useful, but sometimes they don't contain the specific properties that you need. Luckily, you can easily extend the existing object types and add your own custom properties. In this example, we have extended the base system object type, DM sys object, and created a new custom object type called policy. This object type could be used to represent a customer's insurance policy within the repository and thus has several additional properties that are relevant to policies that are not relevant to all system objects. For example, the insurance coverage. Also, the custom type automatically inherits all the properties of the built-in type. Whenever you create a custom type, you specify the parent for that custom type. The custom type inherits the properties defined in the type definition of the parent type. Don't forget that there is a distinction between the object types and object instances. Object types are definitions for which properties that instances of a particular object type may contain. Object instances are actual instantiations of an object type. You can have many instances on a single object type definition. So in XCP Designer, there are several different object models to choose from. As mentioned, you can define custom EMC Documentum documents. In XCP2, these are called content object models. You can define custom contentless object types. In previous products, these were sometimes referred to as structured object types, which are called business objects in XCP2. Of course, you can define folders in the repository. You should know that when you define folders in XCP2, the folder instances are not automatically created when you deploy the application. You either have to create them using a script, manually using DA, or in a process action or function. Pick lists and relationships are two new object models that you can define. We'll cover these object models at a later time in this tutorial. The folders object model defines a custom EMC document and repository folder, and it can contain objects such as content objects and other folders, but it can also contain contentless business objects. You can create a folder model that has no attributes or folder model that inherits attributes from another folder model. The contents of a folder are subject to the containment policies defined for that folder. In XCP2, custom contentless object types are called business object models. These are custom object types that do not represent a content file in the repository. I like to think of them as a kind of table in a database. Examples of this might be an invoice, a purchase order, or an insurance policy. In the case of an instance of an invoice, there would be no need for a file to be stored in the repository for each invoice. All that is needed are the values of the properties for that instance of the invoice, such as vendor name, address, invoice number, amount, etc. You can create a business object model that has no additional custom attributes, or a business object model that inherits attributes from another business object model. Business object models do not contain content renditions or versions. Business objects cannot inherit from content models. They can only inherit from business object XCP core 
or other custom business object models. It's imperative that the custom types used in XCP2 applications are defined using XCP Designer and not defined using other developer tools. The exception to this is defining the instances of folders, where the folder instances need to be created outside of XCP Designer. In future releases of XCP2, there may be methods for utilizing types defined from other development tools, but until those changes are implemented in the product, you'll need to follow this rule. When a new custom business object inherits from another custom business object, the new business object includes all the custom attributes of the immediate parent business object and all the attributes of the types above that. When you create an object model, you configure its attributes and the default location where runtime instance of the object are stored in the document or repository. This is done in the Basics tab and is also true for content object types. You can see here that we're using the application parameter that we defined earlier instead of hard coding a value. When you name object types in XCP2, the namespace that was defined when the application was created is attached to the front of the system name of the type as a prefix to identify this type is associated with the concordant insurance application and to avoid naming conflicts with other applications. In our application, we define the namespace as CIA which will be prepended to both the object models that we're going to construct. The other components that we will construct for the concordant insurance application will also contain the CIA underscore prefix. In XCP2, custom document object types are called content models. When you create an XCP custom content object model, which inherits from base content XCP core by default, when the application is first deployed, a custom EMC document object type will be created that has DM document indicated as its parent type. You can create a content model that has no attributes or a content model that inherits attributes from another content model. Unlike with business objects, content models can contain renditions and versions. A content model cannot inherit from a business object or vice versa. Now as a side note, EMC Documentum Explorer is a component of Documentum Content Server and is automatically deployed as part of the XCP environment. It enables you to get all of your objects full text indexed and searchable without any manual configuration. When you create applications, Explore Index Configuration is updated to index all the objects for all the applications, including comments. Since Explore indexing is global and not application specific, you cannot define object models with attributes that have the same system name but are of different types. For example, you can't define one identifier as a string in an application and as an integer in another application. This concordant insurance application will demonstrate the use of most of the available types of XCP designer artifacts. At the application level, we will define two roles and two parameters. We'll need to model two custom business objects, a custom folder, and a few custom content documents. A custom insurance policy object will contain attributes that identify the name, address, and coverage for the customer's automobile insurance policy. A custom vehicle business object will contain attributes that identify customer's vehicle with attributes like make, model, year, and VIN number. Relationship objects will be created to allow one or more vehicles to be related to a single auto insurance policy. And several pick lists will be used in the application. For example, one for creating a static list of vehicle makes, like Ford, Toyota, etc. The way we're creating insurance claims is by creating a unique folder for each claim. A good reason for doing this is because a claim will often need to contain several supporting documents such as pictures, assessors reports, police reports, etc. So when a claim is created, we use a business process, which is like a workflow, to create the claim and relate it to the policy. Each time a new claim is created, the workflow is started, and we use the workflow ID as the name of a new unique folder under the application's main cabinet, which by default is concordant. Finally, several supporting content types will have specific attributes according to whether it's a claim document, like an attachment to the claim, or just a correspondence. The green flag.png icon in the resources will be used to display an icon on one of the claims pages. Three stateless processes will be created along with a stateful process. We will be creating several user interface artifacts master page and several application pages for policy and claim document searches along with the tasks and reports pages. Of course, each business object will have its collection of user interface artifacts like create, view, and edit pages along with a context menu. Some, like the vehicle business object, has an action flow. Content objects have content UI artifacts. Each content type will have a view page along with EMC Documentum Content Management Page Fragment for check-in and import functions, along with its own context menu. 
the user interface for the claim folder has a view claim, a context menu, and an action flow. Finally, the claim processing stateful process defines two pages for presenting a user interface for conditional situations for their process activities. The next thing we're going to discuss are folder structures. Although not technically a component of our auto insurance application, defining a concrete folder structure to be used with an application is very common. In our case, we will define the base cabinet that will be used by the application and use an application parameter for that. The cabinet will act as the base folder. By default, we will set it to slash concordant. Any application administrator will be provided a user interface for specifying a different cabinet. It will contain a subfolder for each claim that goes through the business process. The name of each claim folder will be derived from the workflow ID while the claim create and relate to a policy stateless business process is running. When you deploy object models to the repository, matching EMC document types are automatically created in the repository. However, like we said before, when you define a folder in XCP Designer, it's not automatically created during deployment. You need to create folders outside of XCP Designer or trigger some other mechanism within the application that performs this function. The concordant insurance application does not create the slash concordant cabinet, but we will design it so that it will create the subfolders within the create claim activity of the claim create and relate to a policy stateless business process. So let's go back into the XCP Designer environment and configure the policy model as described. Right click on the business objects node and select new business object. For label, enter policy and click finish. The policy model appears in the basics tab. Notice the system name has the CIA underscore namespace prefix. Also notice that it inherits from business object XCP core. The default location is where these business objects will be stored in the repository. They don't all have to be stored there but you must specify a default location whenever you create a business object. To do that, let's click the expression wizard button on the right. Select the parameter tab and in the bottom pane select our application parameter param default location and click OK. Now select the attributes tab so we can configure the attributes of the policy business object. From the types pane on the right, add three string attributes a one float attribute and a date time attribute. We'll name them first name, last name, address, then coverage and end date. Notice in the properties pane at the bottom there's a general tab. In the basics section you see the system name. In XCP Designer system names are all lowercase and they use underscore instead of space. And you are allowed to replace them with another variable name that isn't already used. When we add address, notice that there's a little red X next to system name in the general tab at the bottom. Well this is a warning that you're using a reserved system name, address. So let's change address to address line. So now let's save this policy model and close the policy editor.